Do you find yourself answering questions from audience members? They message you through, I don't know, Instagram, Facebook, email, or other ways, and you you maybe feel obligated to respond to them. You're a nice person. So of course, naturally, you want to respond in a kind and helpful way. And maybe you do, and then you start to wonder, oh, I'm spending quite a bit of time and energy doing this. Is it leading to my business? Um, you know, because, well, there are un unlimited numbers of people in the world who want to pick your brain for free. And so, first of all, before I say anything, I really look forward to seeing uh, your opinion about this. Um, those of you who have been in this kind of situation where you start to answer questions and you're like, oh, this is a good use of my, of my business time. If you're doing it as a volunteer, that's wonderful. You know, you're, you're doing good in the world. Uh, volunteering your energy without uh, without any expectation of return and often without no return that's expected at all not in this life anyway but when it comes to your business strategy is it a good idea to do so um so you know what's interesting about this is that i have noticed that as i've as i've grown my business and as i have somehow almost invisibly so let me say somehow I, I am invisibly communicating my boundaries. And so I actually get fewer requests for picking my brain for free than, than ever before. And yet I have more sales of my courses and programs than ever before as well. So whatever business strategy I'm using is working. Now, what I don't do, uh, some people like they, when you message them and you get a you know robot answer in back, saying, oh, if you want to engage with George, please do this or please do that. I don't I don't have any autoresponders, not on my email, which annoys the heck out of me, folks. Please stop. Please stop all the autoresponders on your emails, okay? It's like I email someone and then it's like they get something back, right? Oh, you know, due to my, I check email 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. each day. I'm like, BS, stop. That's that's really silly. And it like clog, clogs up everyone's inbox and it just makes me annoyed. It makes everyone annoyed, you know, makes more people annoyed than somehow making you seem credible and organized. BS, I'm, I'm more organized than you are and I don't have those kinds of autoresponders, right? I'm sorry, maybe some of you are more organized than me. Please uh, te teach me. But I'm I'm pretty darn organized for someone with my, you know, with, 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 with what's on my plate. So um, I don't have those things. And yet I'll tell you why I think my boundaries are strong. Um, there may be some kind of law of attraction, visible vibrations going out. I don't know. I'll, I'll set that aside as a possibility. I think it's because I promote my services, uh, my, my, my offerings often. It's a weird thing to say that the more often and the more confidently you promote your stuff, the more your audience understands your boundaries. If you're not promoting on a frequently basis, and if you don't sound confident in your promotions, you use all kinds of marketing shenanigans. Well, then, you know, it, it, there's an invisible sense of this person's not, it's, this person's insecure. So, and it's a weird thing. It's like the more confident you are, the more people respect your boundaries, right? The more insecure you are, the more people just stomp on your boundaries and you don't know where, you, where your time and energy went. And uh, so the other thing that, that might be helpful is on my orientation um, course. I, I I only put this this particular segment. I'm going to show you uh, on, on screen here. Let me go ahead and show you on the screen here. So on my course platform, I have this thing called Watch the Orientation Videos, and one of my first orientation segments is basically don't email me. I don't like to answer questions via email. When I answer questions, I want it to help multiple people, not just you. Unless you're a one-on-one -on -one client. If you're a one-on-one -on -one client, obviously you're paying me just to help you. But if you're not a one-on-one -on -one client, you're paying me to answer a question that helps a bunch of people, including a course, a group member, whatever it is, right? So for example, I say ways I dislike and ways I like for you to ask me questions, right? And so here, and, and by the way, I'm showing you this and I'll, I'll put this link below um, below this below this video as well. I'm going to put this video on, on YouTube. So uh, I'm further setting my boundaries with all of you YouTubers <laughs> and wh whoever's watching this later. So basically, um, you know, ways I dislike getting questions. Again, private messaging. If I'm only answering you, I'm, I'm not making great use of my time because I could be saying the same thing to probably 
20 people have the same question as you. Why am I only answering you? Right. Um, same thing with email. No. Right. So instead, come to my Q&A calls. You got Nance, you got to buy one of my courses, right? Then you get Q&A calls for, for two months. It's good for my business. It's good for my time. Otherwise, I don't want to I, I, I don't want to do that. Um, and then or comment underneath the lessons. You bought a course. You comment underneath the lessons. I reply to the lesson that helps everybody, not just you. Right. And then members of my uh, my groups. Obviously, you can ask me questions in our private forum. If I answer it, that helps everybody else as well. Right. And so essentially, um, again, I'll put this link below. And the reason why I put the link below is because I made that particular segment publicly available to everyone who's like checking out my stuff. They might see that segment and go, oh yeah, George has the strong boundaries. Now, of course, it always makes me think, am I a jerk? Am I, uh, am I not spiritual? Am I not loving and compassionate? Maybe. Maybe, um, but when it comes to my business time, I am a jerk, I, and I don't mind being a jerk. I'm not a jerk. I know I'm. Whenever I reply back, if someone is is overstepping my boundaries, I reply back nicely, but I reply, reply back firmly because if you don't do that, you get overwhelmed by the world. It's. I think it's actually one of the core lessons for our souls. Let's talk about spirituality here, right? And being nice and loving and all united with the one. Let's talk about that, right? It's like, I feel like that's one of the lessons we're learning is limitation and constraints in this life. Otherwise, why would there be constraints and limitations in this life? Constraints on our time, on our energy, and yet an onslaught. As you get, as you learn how to add more value to the world, you get more of, a, of this test of more people wanting your time, this onslaught. I mean, I think about, I think about that scene uh, as always, you know, you could say, Jesus Christ superstar, <laughs> or you could say the Bible, whichever whichever scene you prefer. Heal yourselves. You know which scene I'm talking about, right? When when Jesus is overwhelmed by all the lepers, right? Remember this scene from Jesus Christ Superstar? If you watch that show or if you read the Bible, you know, Jesus is overwhelmed by all the lepers, and Jesus, like in a moment of frustration or in a moment of spiritual, spiritual wisdom, says, Heal thyselves. He's kind of like saying, I can't deal with all this coming at me. The I mean, now I'm getting too religious and, and preachy here. But what I'm saying is coming back to whether or not you're spiritual or not spiritual or whatever you consider yourself. That's one of the core lessons of this life is how do we deal gracefully with constraints on our time, on our energy, on our attention, and therefore boundaries with our audience. And so back to the original question, is it, is it a good idea to have back and forth private conversations with your, with your audience? I would say, again, if you're in the volunteering mood and mode, and that's, okay, part of my, you know, you could say, hey, my business has a nonprofit arm and a for-profit arm. And my my nonprofit arm means I do spend a couple hours a week responding to people for free without, with, with no, in fact, expecting them not to buy anything, right? That's the true charity, right? It's like, no, I'm, I'm not hoping one day you'll buy something for me. No, I expect you not, not I'm not going to tell them not to buy something, but it's like, zero truly zero expectation that they'll ever even benefit my business one bit that's your nonprofit arm of your business you may want to carve out some hours for that you could you could you know and then you've got the for-profit arm is like okay in these times of my of my week and my day i am very graceful but firm with my boundaries and say hey you know what these are great questions and honestly i love helping clients with this where I love having my group program where I help members with this, join my group program, buy this course from me, come to my Q&A call or whatever it is you want to say gracefully. I would love to continue supporting you in this way. Or I have uh, colleagues and friends I could refer you to um, if you want to uh, to engage with them in, instead. But I really, or or you can think of it as, oh, they're giving you prompts for content. They're giving you a prompt for content. Like, you know, that's a really great question. I'm going to put that as one of my ideas when I write a blog post or make a video, you're going to see it on my Instagram or on my YouTube or on my LinkedIn or whatever. So, but thank you. Thank you for, this is a very interesting question. I have to think about this, right? So, so in the early days, before you have a lot of people doing this, you could just see them as prompts for content. And then, and then later on, like me now, whenever people email me privately a question, um, you know, if I can, I will just respond and say, you know, great question. I wrote about this here. Here's the blog post. That, that takes me not much time. I'm not going to be like, oh, you know, jerky with them. It says, oh, come to my Q&A call when I could say, oh, I have, I have a, if I have something in mind, like, oh, I have a video about this or I have a blog post, I will let them know. But otherwise, I'll say, hey, you know what? Um, 
thanks, but I, 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 uh, I would like, oh, here's my course on this. I go deep in, into this, right? So anyway, I hope this is helpful. I really do look forward to seeing your opinion below. How do you deal with this? Uh, whether you have a small audience or a large audience, I look forward to, to hearing about it. Thank you.